distribution deadline for 2023 is tomorrow. And that means if you plan to add more to your RRSPs, you better act fast. But what if you have already contributed? You're not sure if it's in your best interest to use the tax deduction this year. Here to help us sort out our RRSP questions is Everything Financial President, Peter Sashecki. Good morning, Peter. Good to see you. Good morning. We're nearing the end of... I'm not going to say RRSPCs because you I know how much did. you hate it. You just did. I Swear know. jar right there. I Put it in the like coffee cup. I just like to tease you because I know you hate it so much. But it is uh, the time that we often feel like we have to do our contributions. What if you realize that you've made a contribution and then it's not in the best interest to use that towards your deduction? As long as you have the room in your contribution room, Save it for next year or the year after. Just because you contributed doesn't mean you have to actually put it on your income tax. You can wait, use it for a later date. Maybe you're in a higher tax bracket next year. Maybe you're getting a bonus. So you're allowed to hang on to it as long as you have the room. I think a lot of people are unaware that they were able to hold yeah, off on yeah, that. Yeah, they think, oh, I, I bought it. I have to use the receipt. Hmm. No, you don't. Sometimes it's just not worth it. I went through a case for a person yesterday, and they, they didn't need the receipt. It wasn't going to save them any money. Wait till next year. Okay, so can you over-contribute without having a penalty? Yes, you can, and that's the bizarre thing. So in RSP, you get a tax savings right away, mm -hmm. but you can over-contribute $2,000. Don't put an extra dime into your TFSA, though, because if you put an extra dime into your TFSA, I think the government's going to hunt you down, where you're not actually getting a tax refund, but you can over-contribute up to $2,000. Okay, so what if you have an RRSP, but you have not decided how you want to invest and, it? And, and especially with today and tomorrow being the deadline, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with just letting it sit in cash for a few days. And when you say you sit in cash, what does that mean? It j just sit in cash, like in a daily interest account where you're basically making nothing, but as long as it is in a RRSP account, you get the receipt. So that's all that really matters is you're getting the contribution receipt. It doesn't have to be invested. Where you invest the money does not define an RSP receipt. Hmm. It's just that it's actually in an RSP account. And leave it there, regroup, talk to your registered financial planner, do a financial plan, because an RSP is not a financial plan, it's just a purchase of a product. And then figure out where to invest it later. Do you find that with the deadline, like tomorrow, that people do make some rash decisions and kind of make decisions that aren't based yeah, they on... Just, on they, they just make, I know what you're going to say, they just make whatever the teller at the counter tells them to do. Mm -hmm. And that's not the right decision. That's not a financial plan. I said, it's okay if you need the receipt. And even if you're not sure, you can still purchase it, put it in cash, talk to your registered financial planner, and actually go through a, a plan in March and April, and then make those decisions later. Do I need to use the contribution? What should I invest it in? What's in my best interest? And then decide later, but at least you have the receipt just in case. Are there any other exceptions or circumstances where you would not need to contribute to an RRSP? Yeah, if you're in the lowest tax bracket, 20, maybe even 22%, down in that $45,000 area, it is the absolute, probably one of the worst financial decisions you can make. We talked about this last week because you're not getting the benefit you're, out of it. It's, RSP is not an investment strategy. It's being sold as an investment strategy from the banks and the mutual fund companies. It is a tax deferral strategy. Buy in this tax bracket, way up here at 48, even over anything over 38% really, and then cash in your RSP as a proper plan down in the 20 to 22% hmm. tax bracket. There's the deferral. There's the money you make. Anything else you make in investments, rate of return, and everything else, all that's bonus. So if you're in the lowest tax bracket, there is no deferral. So don't bother. Look at TFSA. If you're young and you've never owned a house, look at the first home savings account. Just look at even a non-registered investment account just to put your money in, just so it'll grow. But don't buy an RSP for tax deferral if there is no tax deferral. All right. Good information with the deadline being tomorrow. Peter Sashecki, Everything Financial. We do want to uh, make a, a quick mention. This is your 200th episode with You're... us here on CTV Morning Live. Wow. Time flies when you're <laughs> having fun. <laughs> Giving financial <laughs> advice and, and good information. And they said it wouldn't last a week. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, this guy. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Who is <laughs> yeah. this Peter? Anyway, it's been great having you well, on the show. It's been great doing this with you, and uh, hopefully a couple hundred more to go. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Peter, for joining Thank you. us this morning.